God, we exalt you. Yes, Lord, we extol you today. We love you, God. We love your faithfulness towards us. Yes, we do. Today will be the best day, the best day of my life. Today will be the best day, the best day.
Welcome to Midweek Manna. I am so excited that you have decided to spend a portion of your day with us. I am truly grateful for you joining us. I say that this is the day that our God has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that our God has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and most heavenly God, we come before you on this day, God, telling you thank you. God, we tell you thank you that you saw fit to wake us up this morning and start us on our way. And God, that last breath that you just gave us, God, we do not take it for granted, for we know it is a gift from you. God, we come thanking you for your grace and your mercy. And God, we also come now asking for your presence in this service. God, we welcome your presence through the video streams that all who are watching will gain something new and learn something new and grow closer to you in these moments, God. God, be with us in a mighty way and God, we will be forever grateful to give your name, the praise, the honor and the glory. Again, everybody, I say welcome. I thank you for joining us. This is my last Wednesday with you all for Midweek Manna, but uh, I'm sure that whoever follows me will bring just as wonderful messages to you. But again, I tell you, thank you. At this moment, uh, I will say that this is a point in the worship service that we can all part participate in, for this is the moment of offering. It is offering time. Scripture says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, running over, pouring into your cup. For the measure in which you give, it shall be measured on to you. It's offering time. Let's continue to reinvest in our community and honor the legacy of our ancestors. For Scripture says, give, invest, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shake it together to make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give, the amount you invest will determine the amount you get back. There are multiple ways for you to support the ministry of Trinity United Church of Christ with your tithes and offerings. You may give through our Secure Give app. You may also text to give by dialing 855-781-8384. Give via our cash app, dollar sign, Trinity UCC, or use our website. With a few easy clicks, you will be well on your way to support this ministry. Also, our First Fruits Direct Draft Program allows you to make your church a priority. And if you prefer to mail your gift, simply send your tithe or donation to 400 West 95th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60628. Thank you for supporting Trinity United Church of Christ, the greatest church this side of the Jordan. And now let us do a prayer for Black History Month. It's written by an unknown author, but I loved it. It, it goes spirit of abundance, God of grace, mother of hope. We pause now to remember those stories that are all around us those stories that are often passed over, those stories that when are told, we share them because of what the nation's character is doesn't necessarily give us the opportunity to do. We wind up sharing those stories in this month we call Black History Month. But God, we want uh, people to realize that Black History Month is everybody's history. It's not just for one month. I hope the day will come when those are, who are being taught in schools get our history, that it is widely taught. God, let there be different choices made in our school system. I pray now for those choices. I pray for us to see a day when the prison system is redemptive and not punitive, a day where we can focus more squarely on the facts and not the colors of our skin. I pray for the day when our schools are well-funded and for all of those needs of our children where they are met. I pray for our role models to be allowed to be able to share their rich heritages. I know that it will require a shift in the way we think and it can be scary. Those are times where people are filled with fear and hope at the same time. God, we come asking that those stories be told, God, that the history remain. God, let there be vision that this doesn't just last for a month, that this is something that lasts far beyond. It is everybody's history. It is a history of our humanity. For this month, we have been focusing and hovering over the book of Philippians chapter four. We began by looking at verses one through three, and we saw these two women leaders in the church who were quarreling. And we saw how 
in the end, they were actually better together. And then we looked at unity, the unity in that week of them. And then in week two, we looked at verses four through seven. We looked at joy. This joy that I have, the world did not give it and the world cannot take it away. And then last week we looked at verses eight and nine. So now today we're going to look at verses 10 through 13. It reads as follows. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at, the, at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed you were concerned, but you had not had the opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content. Whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want, I can do all this through Christ who gives me strength. Let us focus on this idea, the secret of being content, the secret of being content. If you know me and if you know anything about me, you will know that I love me some India Irie. Me and my daughter would get in the car in the mornings as I was driving her to school and we would put on our India Irie and we would belt out those songs on our drives in the morning. When I would drop her off, we would be screaming. I will confess to you that I have had some of the most joyous and dare I say spiritual moments in my life when I am listening to me some India Irie. Her songs, a lot of them, they perfectly intersect uh, in her music between spirituality and music and R&B. Her songs are accessible and they are spiritually grounded. Songs like Better People, India Song, The Truth, Sacred, Space, Back to the Middle, to name a few of her songs, those are my favorites. But then there is one of her songs where she gives some great lessons on contentment. The song title is, There's Hope. If you know that song or if you're familiar with that song, drop some notes in the comments. This song is the song that played uh, when Barack Obama won the presidential election in 2008. And right there in Grant Park, there we were, me and Bria out there singing, There's Hope. Doesn't cost a thing to smile, you don't have to pay to laugh. You better thank God for that. There is hope. We just were happy. There was a real sense of happiness and hope. This song is really a sermon for me. It says, back when I had a little, I thought that I needed a lot. You see, a little was overrated, but a lot was a little too complicated. See, zero didn't satisfy me. A million didn't make me happy. That's when I learned the lesson that it is all about your perception. Says, so you are pauper or a superstar, so you act, so you feel, so you are. It's not about the size of your faith, it's about the size, it's not, a size, it's not about the size of your car, it's about the size of the faith in your heart. There is hope. It doesn't cost a thing to smile. You don't have to pay to laugh. You better thank God for that. I love me some India Irene. She continues in the lyrics with this brother that taught her some things about contentment. It says, back in the back, in the back country of Brazil, I met a young brother that made me feel that, that I could accomplish anything. You see, just like me, he wanted to sing. He had no windows or no doors. He lived a simple life. He was extremely poor. On top of all of that, he had no eyesight, but that did not keep him from seeing the light. He said, what's it like in the USA? And all I did was complain. He said, living here is paradise. He said, paradise is in your mind. You know that there is hope. This brother in the back country of Brazil schooled her a bit. This black brother, he was in the poor of the poorest of neighborhoods. Can you imagine a neighborhood where there are no windows or no doors. This man lived in poverty. This means he probably did not have enough resources to provide for his basic necessities of life, food, clean water, shelter, and clothing. But then on top of all of that, she goes on to say he had no eyesight. But the lesson is that even though he lived in poverty, even though he could not see, he felt as though he was living in paradise. Paradise was in his mind and he had a great sense of hope. It did not matter what his circumstance was. He was content. The amount of money he had did not matter. It was all about 
his perception. He then asked her, what's it like to live in the USA? And all she did was complain. Our Western thought has us always complaining. Had to look up some things that we complained about because you know we complain. We complain about having to wear a mask. We complain about having to be vaccinated, some of us. We complain about bad food at a restaurant or telemarketers and robocalls. We complain if somebody cut us in line. We complain about feeling cold or hot. We complain about our jobs. For most of us, at least, we have a job. We complain if our packages don't show up. We complain about traffic. We complain about free Wi-Fi. It's free. We complain about lengthy waits and drive throughs We complain about the weather. We complain about the toilet seat being left up. We complain about people on Facebook. We complain about everything. Do you know somebody who complains? Do you know somebody who is a complainer that will complain about anything and everything? We call them negative Nancys. Truth be told, we can all be complainers. We can all complain. While this poor man in Brazil thank God for what he had and what he says is a paradise, he again says, paradise is in your mind. So this text taught me a few things. First thing it taught me was that people and things are not required. Paul in our text for today also speaks about how the people of Philippi did not or were not able to, to come and give him any accolades. Didn't know whether they had time or what the reason was, but this, this text teaches us that the other people affirming you and your quest for contentment are not required. The warning label might read other people not required. Happiness and contentment is when you feel good about yourself without feeling the need for anyone else's approval. Ain't nobody give you, gotta give you a hands up. Ain't nobody gotta give you any accolades. You pat your own self on the back, even when no one else will. In verse 11 of our text, Paul says, I am not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content wherever and whatever the circumstance. The next thing this text teaches me is that you've got to have proper perspective. This song and this text teaches me that it is about your perspective. Stop complaining about things that you can't control and things that don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Perception does become your reality. In verse 12, Paul says, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want does not matter, matter whether you have a little or a lot. Be content no matter what Paul says, just have a positive attitude. A positive attitude is essential to happiness, joy, and progress in life. The state of mind brings light, hope, and enthusiasm into the situation. Adopting a positive mindset in your life and gaining a proper perspective does not mean that everything will always move smoothly and that there will be no bumps in the road. It does, however, mean that no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what you may encounter, as long as you have a positive mindset, you can make it despite any setback. The next thing the text teaches us is that we've got to pair ourselves with Christ. Verse 13 in this chapter says, with Christ I can do all things who, with Christ who strengthens me. Pairing yourself with Christ means that you are intentional about your prayer life. It means that you get intimate with Jesus. It means that you train yourself to be with Jesus. It means that you study scripture. You don't just take that scripture for face value. You dig deep and you find out what that text really means for you and your community. It means that you use those words in the text and you provide inspiration and power to those in your community and you don't oppress them with it. It means that you talk with Jesus and that you walk with Jesus and you ask Jesus to continually lead you and guide you and order your steps. It means that you are intimate with Jesus. That famous statement, what would Jesus do? It sounds like a cliche, but think about how Jesus would handle most situations. situations. Think about it. Think about the words of our text, those last words. You can do all things through Christ who, sent, who strengthens you. And with that, the secret to contentment is that people and things are not required for your contentment. The other thing is that proper perspective helps you to be content in any situation and in any circumstance. 
Know that you can do all things through the Christ who gives you strength. Pair with Christ. In these moments, I invite you to, to pair with Christ and to gain a walking partner with you on your journey to contentment. If you've never made the decision to, to walk with Christ, if you've never made the decision to, to be in relationship with our God, this is the moment where you have an opportunity to say yes. So if you will, if you're interested in becoming a, man, a member of this branch of Zion, then I ask that you look at the scroll on the bottom of the screen or click or call the phone numbers that are listed there and in the chat box. We would be happy to have you. We would be gracious and we will walk with you on this journey. We invite you on this day. We love you and we ask that you join with us in a pairing with Christ. In these moments, God, we give you praise and we give you glory. God, we ask that you help us to see contentment. God, we ask you how to operate with little or a lot. God, we ask for your contentment in any situation and in everything that we do. And now, oh God, I ask that you continue to walk with us and talk with us and tell us what you want, God. And we ask that you be with us on our journey of contentment. Let us go from this stream, but God, we know never from your presence and peace. Let us all together say amen. Amen. All right, y'all, you know how we do it. Peace out, did you out? I gotta go. I see you all next time, but I hope you enjoyed this February, this Black History Month of Midweek Manus. Have a great week, everybody.